All right, guys, welcome back to another track guide. Uh, this week is going to be LMP2 at Circuit de Barcelona, uh, Catalunya, the historic circuit. Um, this is on the fixed series, so uh, as a reminder, all of my guides are tailored to do towards uh, repeatable uh, performances. They are not necessarily the fastest laps you're going to see on YouTube, but they're also not necessarily the slowest. Um, I'd say your goal here is to use the tips here um, as a bit of a reference and use that to inform your practice this week and then yourselves in the race and uh, try your best to uh, build some consistency. Um, so the lap that I'll be showing you is the 131.553. Uh, I think this is pretty consistent. It wasn't super, super on the edge or anything. Um, and, and I think it is possible to just kind of be around this pace. As I was playing around in the session, I was kind of doing some like uh, quali sims a bit. Uh, and I was getting pretty close, you know, all the time to around this pace. So I think this is pretty attainable. What I tend to try to do is to be plus or minus five tenths of uh, an average lap. So whatever my average lap time is over the course of a stint, I try to make sure I'm within five tenths of that. So I think I'll probably settle into like the 31 nines. I can do that pretty consistently. Um, but you know, I, I might also be a little bit below that during the race. I don't think I'll do a five, five, three, every lap, my optimal, which I am close on my fastest lap is a, uh, 31, three. So again, not the fastest guy, but, but not the slowest. So anyway, let's, let's take a look, uh, at the lap. We'll do a full speed lap and then we'll talk about it. All right, so uh, starting the lap, you know, what some of the things you want to think about is getting an exit onto the, the straight is really important. We'll talk about this at the end of the lap, but make sure you get a really good exit on the straight. And then you just want to, like, you know, be as straight as possible here. I mean, the straight is pretty straightforward here, um, pun intended. Uh, I guess that's a pun. Uh, but anyway, so drive yourself down here. And then what we're going to start to look for is... At about here, you know, you kind of want to be feasting your eyes a bit on this 100 board and then also through the corner. So I'm coming down, I'm getting ready to break right around the 100 and then I'm looking ahead into the corner. You know, I want to catch this out of my peripheral, you know, out of my left eye, but my eyes are really focusing kind of like here. And so as we come down to the, the, the braking zone, you can actually go to 100% brake in this car. Um, I guess my foot touched the clutch a little bit, but it doesn't really matter in this car. Um, but you can go to 100% for quite a while, actually, because you have so much downforce in this car. So utilize that and make sure you brake in a straight line. And then as we start to approach, you know, uh, my turn in points, I start to think about my turn in right around this line or where this, this ends. So either this line or this. 
But you know, remember, I'm looking. Like, my eyes are like here now because I'm looking at this, and then I'm going to go back and forth between these two things. I'm not so much looking here. But what I want to do is now I'm going to start to release the brakes and just kind of think about turning in. So the wheel is is a little light, you know, it's really light in my hands. I'm, you know, turning it just a little bit and you don't need much at this point. You could still bleed off so much speed. I would argue you could probably hold more brake for longer if your wheel is a bit straighter, but I think this is pretty OK. And then you start to turn in as the, the speed comes down, your brake pressure releases and then all i'm doing is i'm just coaxing the car in i do this thing uh i've had comments on it that you shouldn't it scrubs the tires but for me it actually works quite well um like i get kind of a little bit too much rotation and my hands are so light on the wheel that it kind of like goes away from me a bit and so i just it looks like rather abrupt but i'm just coercing it back a little bit of pressure with my right hand pulling down it's, imp it's important, I think, to pull down with your right hand as opposed to push up with your left hand. So I'm just pulling down a little bit of pressure. I do this thing in these corners where, you know, I'm really just like thumb and pointer finger on each side of the wheel. And I have a little bit of pressure on my, um, you know, on my uh, like palms of my hand. And I'm just, you know, pulling a bit. Right. So it's pretty light hands. But that way I don't. You know, I think I have a pretty, pretty decently strong grip, so I don't want to have all of my hand on the wheel because I, I will really, you know, crank on it, which you don't want to do. I want to kind of let the front tires do their own thing, let the suspension do its thing. I'm just coaxing the car in, right? Um, and so, you know, we hold a little bit of brake pressure. When we get to this like lower amount of brake pressure, this is when we can start to add steering, right? So it's actually pretty okay to do this, and the car continues to turn. You can see. So this is actually pretty good. You want to get really close to this uh, like curb here, but you don't want to touch it. Um, so you want to get real close to it, kind of follow this along. I'm actually pretty proud of this one. Um, I don't get it exactly this way every time, but you want to really follow this along. And the reason I'm spending so much time on this corner is because it is pretty important. I overlap my inputs a little bit. It's not a big deal, you know, um, don't worry about it. If you do this, it's not a big deal. But you want to start to now feed the power back in. You're done adding steering. The car may still be turning, which I think is acceptable here. But you want to start to add throttle back in. And then straighten the car up nice nice and good. And now your eyes, right? My eyes are like here, but I'm aware of this. What you want to kind of do now is just start to coax the car into this corner. Now, you can actually run over this like a lot. And I don't think you get off track until you're like, I think it's these two wheels on the green. Don't quote me, but like middle of your car on this is actually okay. We didn't quite get that here. Um, you know, I could be a little bit more over. It doesn't hurt you in any way, but you do want to lift a bit, right? Because you want to tuck the car in for the corner. And I'm just using the curb to help me rotate. And so one thing here I've seen is that you don't necessarily need to prioritize getting all the way over to the right i still try to get more right than not before i turn in but i have seen people be really tight out here and just run the corner really tight i think either works uh i'm, I'm obviously not horribly off pace so play around with what works for you i think this just fits my style a little bit more of how i like to drive the corner and again now my eyes are just focusing past this like i'm looking through the corner right and what you want to do as you start to come in is you want to just start to bleed off the throttle. Not abruptly, not fully lift, but bring yourself down to like 40% throttle and just tuck the car in into here. You could actually touch this curb a little bit. Just tuck the car in and then you can start to feed the power back. What I like to do is I, I say, okay, when I get down to this curb, I'm going to give it a heartbeat and then I'm going to start to feed the power back in. And what ends up happening is yeah you're still turning a bit which is fine but you start to go wide and you can honestly like you can probably maybe feed the power a little earlier here because you can afford to be wider i think once your tires cross the white line you get an off track at this part of the track so be mindful of that and that's probably what i was thinking about here this is safe right and it's still fairly quick so i think i think it's acceptable so as we come into this next corner what i want to do is i want to straddle the curb here so run over the curb. This is perfectly legal on track limits at this part of the track. But my eyes, my eyes are focusing in here. I'm starting to look through the corner. 
And so what we do is right I, you know my breaking point is kind of weird here like i don't have a specific reference i just have a good amount of practice now where i'm like okay i have a rhythm right and i know where i need to turn in and i actually have a couple of lines through here and so i think practicing not just um you know one line is advantageous because you can start to build some data for yourself as how the car reacts it's really crucial when you're racing because you might have someone on the outside and you might not want to come all the way over here, right? So I have a couple of lines, a couple of breaking points, depending on what I want to do here. But um, what I'm trying to do is is really like look through the corner and like, you know, this is kind of weird, but when my wiper, you know, passes this, this bit of the wall, that's pretty much my break point. And I'm going to go really hard on the brakes. Again, this car, you can go 100% brakes because it has so much downforce when you're at these speeds. You can actually see, I think, how fast the, the speed bleeds off. I mean, you lose like 40, 40 mile an hour and, you know, a fraction of a second. I tend to try to, like, turn a little bit later here. Um, you know, I tend to not turn until I start to get to the white, but again, this is the alt alternate lines that I have here. This worked for me, you know, cause I still got what I wanted done. I didn't fully turn the car until I, you know, started to get on this white line. So it's just a little bit of angle and a, and a decent amount of brakes to get some rotation, but you want to spiral the car in, um, you know, to this corner. And what I'm doing is... I'm just holding a little bit of trail brake and I'm just trying to tuck the car in as much as possible. And then I start to feed the power back in. And my goal here, a lot of people run this really, really tight. Again, I think you can do that, especially if you're trying to defend or you want to stay ahead of someone, you know, you want to make sure that you cover them off. But I tend to run this actually quite wide because I get on power early and get nice and far out here so this one's important right because your braking is a little bit compromised it's a little off angle and it's downhill right but what you want to do is as you're coming over your eyes want to be here you want to just keep your eyes here and you're going to break again you won't be able to get fully straight when you go on on brakes you can't really go full brake pressure here right it's, it's pretty close if you do it, it's it's like immediate and, and it starts to bleed off. I, I honestly wouldn't do it because the track falls away from you here. You're at an angle. You're you know getting close to the curb. You might be touching the curb. I don't I don't recommend touching the curb, but you may. I, I really wouldn't do it. But you do just want to like you know wait. And I'm just waiting. And I'm just waiting. And I start to turn in. I start to turn in. And this is that little bit of like neutral steer balance that I do. And I would actually like to get closer down to the curb here. But I do try to lay apex this one, right? I don't want to be on the curb here. I want to be, you know, in this area on the curb. And so, I, like I said, I missed the apex here. But one thing to, to remember, right, is like, even if you miss the apex a little bit, your goal is to keep the energy in the car. Because if you're keeping the energy in the car, you're keeping speed, you're keeping forward momentum. And it's not going to hurt you as much as, you know, you think it will. Um... So just keep the energy in the car. You you don't get up on the curb fully. That does not mean you slow down more or you give up in this corner or you abandon it because trying to do the exact same lap every single lap is unrealistic, right? Have these goals in mind and then work towards those goals, but be realistic. And what I'm looking for now is, again, I'm still looking forward, but I want to drive out of this corner and I want to actually kind of go pretty far over here you can run this like fully over and it's okay i don't think you get an off track until your right tires touch the, the the gravel so as we approach this corner what we want to do is again i'm looking i'm looking ahead i don't you don't need to bring the car over here i think you can stay over here it's fine but you want to get nice and square and my break point it was a little early here but generally you want to like go hard on the brakes right when this starts you know it's, it's not too bad um but really hard on the brakes almost 100 percent, and then immediately start to bleed off and now oops wrong one my eyes are up here i'm just i'm just looking forward now right, up the hill spiral the car in just just coax it try not to do too much steering angle 
just get your rotation with the brakes. And you can run over this curb at the end a little bit. And I'm now back on the power. And my aim is to have the car kind of do this as it follows the track. Because the track falls a bit here and it's a little higher here. And then, you know, it's it's like a pocket here and then you pop up, right? So I want to like go straight through that pocket as much as possible. So I'm going straight, hard on the power. You do not want to hit this curb. <laughs> don't hit this curb. Uh, just, just don't. I'm not going to tell you how to take it where you won't kill the car. Just, just don't hit this curb. It, it's really bad. But you want to get pretty close to it because you want to just be straight up the hill. And you want to minimize how much steering you've got. Um, I think we can do far chase. Uh, oh, my far chase got messed up. All right. Uh, chopper. Here we go. So this is good. Like, yeah, pretty dang close to it, right? But not, not touch it. So push up the hill. You can get a little bit on the curb here. People do this corner differently, and I'm gonna talk about this for one for a while. I, I don't want I don't want this this uh, video to be too long, but I think it is important to talk about this corner. So people do this corner a little differently. How I like to do it is run straight as long as possible, get a nice aggressive lift with a bit of brake, and you see how the car rotates, right? It has this like aggressive but quick rotation. Like we're not scrubbing speed too much. Like we're slowing down a little bit, but the hill is helping us slow down. A lot of people lift and just turn in and I personally with the way that I drive could not get that consistent where I wasn't scrubbing the tires and losing a bunch of speed so this works the best for me try it out both ways for yourself you know a, a, a gentle lift as you turn in so that you use some of the throttle to turn the car as you're turning but you're not like you know full throttle as you have a bunch of steering in um, try it but for me what I do is this and you know I'm getting a lot of rotation in a really quick amount of time. And you can actually see me neutral steer for a second. And then my goal now is I'm looking over here, but I'm just running this curb over. Well, at this time I didn't. I guess I understeered a little bit. But, you know, I'll get my right side of the wheels, or right side of the car up on the curb a bit. And I'm just running it out here. Really important. Don't go any more over this than this. You will get an off track. Uh, it's brutal here. It's very, very brutal here. Um, so this is what it looks like from the inside of the car. Don't go any more over than this. This corner is fairly straightforward. As we come down, you want to get yourself nice and parallel. Your braking marker here, it depends on how comfortable you are. You can brake at the 100, but it is going to be like two tenths a lap slower. I tend to brake right around this little like black thing. So you're going to come in nice and parallel. Eyes are looking here, right? Nice and parallel, and then as you get close to that black thing, I go hard on the brakes. Again, you got a lot of downforce. Use that to bleed the speed off. Don't turn yet. Discipline yourself. Do not turn the car until you're right at the end of this curb. You could even probably turn a little later, but for me, it works to turn right at the end of this curb, and I'm just, it's just, it's just baby turns, right? Like, I don't have a ton of wheel. I'm still rotating the car on the brakes. The car is not really slowing down anymore. Like, it is a little bit, but not a ton. And I'm just getting rotation. I'll touch this curb down in first gear, a little bit of nothingness, and then we're starting to feed the power back in. Take advantage of this little bit of camber on the track. Be very careful as you feed the power back in, especially in first gear. Um, keep your hands light so that you're, you can react uh, to what the car does. And then you kind of want to like double apex this a little bit. So you want to get the car as close into this as possible. I, I, the setup for this next corner is, is a little different for me than others, but I get it nice and tight here. And then what I'm looking for is I'm looking ahead. This corner is really hard for me, right? So um, I actually don't do this the best, but what I do is repeatable. So I'm starting to turn in and I add a bit of brake as I turn in. I go down to second and I'm just, you know, I'm not trying to get down to, to the curb. You know, I'm really on the edge here, actually. Uh, as you can see in the car, the attitude of the car. I go down into first to get a little extra rotation. I'm just kind of doing nothing for a second. And then I feed the power back in, kind of apex it, if you will, right around this uh, little curb. And then my goal is just drive as straight as possible without going off the track. So I'm trying to get the car nice and wide over here. As long as you don't touch the dirt, you won't get a 1x. So, you know, drive it out here. And you really need to to set up this next corner. And what I'm doing here is, as we start to approach these cones here, 
I'm turning in. You're actually turning in quite early. I lift a little bit. Depending on when you turn, you don't have to lift, right? I don't think you lose a lot of momentum since it goes downhill by lifting here a little bit to make sure that you turn in. Because what I find is this car actually has a ton of grip. And if you are really hard on throttle and you get a really good snappy rotation, you will run really far inside here and get an off track. Like you don't want these wheels on the inside of this curb because you will get you, you're going to slow down, actually. So it's really, really bad. <laughs> um, so it, I find that if I lift, it takes a bit of the the rear grip out of the car and it just it stops turning a little bit because this car will turn like, you know, as we fall down that 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 bit of track. So I take a little bit of the rear grip out the little bit of the weight off the rear wheels and let it push a tiny bit. It's not under steering, but it's just not turning as well. And I try to run right along this, right along this. And I'm back on the power here. And you want to run really close to this curb, but do not touch it. I probably touch it a bit. No, I didn't this time. Uh, but you're actually braking quite hard, kind of in the middle of this. And again, your eyes are here, you know. You should be seeing this out of your peripheral. Your eyes should be here. I'm going to brake quite hard and turn in. And my goal is to get the car down to this curb and start to feed the power back in. And this curb is like actually kind of high. I wouldn't get your wheels over it, but you can touch it. And it kind of evens the car out, like plane, it kind of planes the car a bit. And I think it, it works quite well. And then your goal now is just to be on power as early as possible with as little scrub as possible. And you can run actually all the way out here. As long as you don't touch the, the gravel, you don't get enough track. So run it super, super, super wide. And that's it. So yeah, that is a lap of uh, Barcelona for the LMP2 fix. I know this video went a little long, but there were some sections I really wanted to, to make sure to explain quite well. Um, let me know how you guys get on this week. Um, you know, if you're if you're close to this lap time, if you're faster, whatever it is. But remember, the goal is consistency. So find yourself a, a place in practice and just just stay on that. You will find more time in consistency than trying to push, right? So just just keep yourself consistent, and the time will flow, and then hopefully you be, you'll be very successful in the race this week. Um, so yeah, do the YouTube thing, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.